We're talking metadata and encryption laws with Chris Duckett for ZDNet out of Australia. So Chris, let's just start here uh, with where the laws currently stand and how the people are responding. Okay, so it's important to realize that there, th these are two things. So the metadata laws, the data retention regime has been around, the laws were passed in 2015, it's been in action for about two to three years. Um, this is pretty much the same sort of regime that the uh, European courts threw out a couple of years ago when the UK had to scramble to recreate the retention system they really wanted to keep. Uh, you know, we don't have those courts, so we just plow ahead. Uh, and then after, uh, just before Christmas, that was when we brought in the encryption laws. Now, these are the ones where we are kind of doing the front running for the five eyes here. Uh, this week, uh, Attorney General Barr in the States, you know, he made comments that you know, we need to get access to encryption. So that's pretty much been the whole story down here for two years now. Um, at the moment, our security committee, security and intelligence committee is reviewing both laws. So there's a whole bunch of this stuff coming out at once and they kind of, play, I mean, they play into each other because it's the surveillance state, surveillance capitalism, all that sort of stuff coming together. Um, and this week, yeah, there was a poll and the poll was really trying to push people into saying they were concerned. And even then, the best they could do is have more or less 30% really concerned or not concerned, and then this whack of 40% in the middle saying, oh, I'm slightly concerned. But I feel that was because it was the middle option. And so with a lot of tech issues, you've got, when the, you know, a chunk of the population is really concerned and it's basically balanced by the bunch of people who don't care. And then in the middle, the people who are just like, I, I just wanna, you know, have a job. I don't need to worry about this sort of stuff. Um, so for the civil libertarians and the privacy people, that polls should be depressing. It shouldn't be something that they should latch onto because it shows how hard it's going to be to change any of this. Um, the only way I can think of of changing it is abolishing both major parties in this country and replacing them with privacy advocates because they're both on board. So nothing is going to come of this review other than a lot of whinging and pointing out exactly where the faults are, which is exactly what we did in the years before these laws came in. Uh, but, you know, fight the good fight needs to be said. Um, the one thing that could change this, uh, and particularly here with the encryption laws, is if somebody big decided to blacklist Australia, so in a few submissions, there's been winks and nods that there's multinationals who don't do business in Australia, but do do business in China and Russia. That would be a lot more powerful if we could have their names, uh, because then we could actually test this fact, whereas at the moment it's rumours. Uh, and one of the rumours that was going around before the laws were brought in was the cops would be able to force employees to subvert their own code. Now, we're pretty sure that's not going to happen. We've seen the guidance come out of the government. They've said they're not going to do this. At this point, we more or less have to take them on their word. Uh, but there's so much secrecy around this stuff that really anything could happen. But it would be just really good to have a few examples to point to to say why this stuff is bad, particularly the encryption laws. Okay, and Chris, from the government standpoint, uh, how are they responding to the concerns that they're certainly hearing from the people. Oh, so their responses are beautiful, magical thinking. Um, in, these, in, in a bunch of these submissions, they've said there's been no breaches reported and that's why we think it's running fine. Because naturally, if no one tells you they've stolen stuff, then your shop has not been robbed. Um, so you've got a situation where you know, the whole back room could be on fire but because nobody in the front room can see it, everyone thinks they're fine. Um, you know, particularly with metadata, you know, you the telcos have these massive stores of data just sitting there. They have to keep them for two years. We're talking, uh, you know, the sort of details that appear on your phone bill, plus your location. So your location comes from what tower you're connected to. 
And given the increasing density of the towers around the world, you know, we can get we can get your location pretty spot on. And that's going to be a, and particularly with five G, with the uh, you know picto cells and that sort of stuff. You know, it's going to get down to about ten meters. So it's pretty personal stuff. Now. These stores are sitting inside the telcos. We found out that at least one telco was allowed to have this stuff unencrypted, at least parts of it. And the legislation itself says everything has to be encrypted because this is very, uh, you know, people want to get their hands on this data, you need to protect it properly. So if one telco got an exemption for this, how many more? And I'm pretty sure you know, everyone's digging around trying to get at that. Um, so with, the government response to this generally seems to be, it's fine. Uh, and everybody else is going, prove it. And that is quite significant, Chris. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about the developments with this issue, make sure you stick with ZDNet, as Chris does have several articles there uh, pertaining to this. Thanks for watching.